Okay, hi. Hi, thank you for coming. Uh, I'm Jess, I'll do a brief introduction in a minute, but first of all, does everybody have a laptop? Yes? Yeah? No. Okay, um, would you like to make a friend? Uh, <laughs> Because I think it would be really, everyone, it's going to be quite hands-on and people are going to be, you're going to be building things, so it might be useful to sit next to someone. I don't want to, I don't want to kick you out. <laughs> yeah, okay. Cool. Um, and are you all connected to the internet? Yeah. Great. Okay, so uh, hi, uh, I'm Jess. I am a marketing automation consultant at Empower, so I work with Pardot, Marketing Cloud, and Salesforce. I actually come from a marketing background, so I was um, an end user of uh, marketing automation. Uh, I've been doing it for about eight years now, so, um, and I come from that side of things, so everything that I I've kind of done has always been thought about from a marketing perspective, which is for me has made things a lot easier. Um, yeah, four times certified, and I run the Pardot user group. So, are you, are you based in London? Yeah, okay. If you ever want to learn more about Pardot, or you want to make some Pardot friends, or you just want wine and pizza, um, come along. We, uh, we run every month. Um, I will be sending out some information afterwards. Um, so if you do want to come along, do. It's really good fun. Well, I think so. Um, okay, so uh, first of all, I'd like to know a little bit about what you know about Pardot and Salesforce. So, um, could everybody please navigate to kahoot.it and I will get your pin up on the board. Okay, so this is the pin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, I'm waiting for about 21 names, I think. Sorry, what is it? Just Kahoot.it? Yeah. Is it, are, you, are you in? Yep, cool. Okay, I'll just give you a couple more minutes to register. So everyone? Okay. So, um, yeah, a couple of questions. Fire away. I'll get out of the way. Sorry, you have to be quite speedy. Okay, all right. <laughs> Lots of people confused. Did, how many of you thought that um, Pardot was actually pronounced Pardo? <laughs> it should be. It should. Well, it should. It shouldn't be actually. It's actually Latvian. Um, I think, and it means to sell. So there you go. It's Pardot, not Pardo. Okay, next question. I'm sorry they're, sorry they're so speedy. You're going to have to be quick. Okay, good, good. 
that's, uh, that's about what I expected. A lot of admins here, which is good. Um, yeah, we're going to be doing, we're going to be looking at a couple of things in Salesforce today, so it'd be good to have some knowledge, but uh, don't worry if not. All good? Okay. And finally. Okay, cool. Yep, again, about what I expected. So um, we'll be focusing um, a lot on Pardot as if it was, uh, as if you'd never heard of it, basically. Um, but hopefully you'll understand how to, how to bring some marketing campaigns to life. So, good stuff. All right, let's get back to the action. So um, what we're doing today uh, we're just going to have a, a basic introduction to Pardot, so what Pardot can do, what it can't do, um, the things that as an admin you might need to know if you're ever working with Pardot. And um, everyone's going to build an engagement studio program. So you're going to build your first ever marketing automation program. It's very exciting. It's good fun. Okay. Um, so what is Pardot? So Pardot is the Salesforce B2B business-to-business -business marketing tool. Um, so what that means is that it's really focused on nurturing and longer, um, longer pipelines, longer sales funnels, um, and really kind of nurturing those leads across a longer period of time to get them more engaged with you. Um, Personalised communication. So it's not about just sending out loads of emails to, you know, the same email to loads of people. That's, that's not marketing in this day and age. That's not nurturing. So it's about getting the, your message, the right message to your prospects at the right time. Um, it's a sophisticated way to prioritize your leads. So there's a really nice scoring and grading system within Pardot um, that allows you to pass on leads to Salesforce and to your sales teams um, and kind of categorizes them so that you know they know which ones to chase up at the right time. And um, there's some really sophisticated um, ROI and activity reporting in, in like, um, enabled so you can really um, you can see which of your marketing efforts are producing the most ROI so that you know where to put your spend next time. What is Pardot not? It's not just an email sending tool there's so much more to it than that you know a lot of people see Pardot as a MailChimp replacement and it kind of is it can be a MailChimp replacement but there's also a lot more on top of that so you know it's worth bearing that in mind. Um, it is not a replacement for a real life person. I'm sorry, Pardot cannot do a person's job for you. You still need all of the content and you still need all that time and effort. However, that effort will reap more rewards because you're being more productive. It is not Marketing Cloud. Marketing Cloud is a completely separate product. Um, that's mostly focused on B2C. Um, they, there are different pros and cons. I don't know if anyone saw the talk this morning. Did you see anyone? No? Okay, um, yeah, there are, there are very different pros and cons to Pardot and Marketing Cloud. Um, really depends on your needs, um, but this is not Marketing Cloud. And Pardot is not platform native, so it's not built in the uh, Salesforce platform. Um, there is a move at the moment to kind of really integrate those much more closely. So I think that as admins, you'll be um, you'll be seeing more of Pardot and um, seeing more of B2B marketing. It'll become much more relevant to you. Okay, so, um, oh yeah, and an important note, uh, the org that we will be logging into today is a training environment, which means that not all functionality is supported. There are certain limitations. So don't, uh, don't think that what we're, that the org that you see today is fully representative of what Pardot is capable of. Okay, um, so the first things that you need to know about Pardot um, are, I think, the connector is really key. Um, Pardot operates on a connector user between Pardot and Salesforce. So what that means is you, um, the connector user is just a license in Salesforce, and that, um, that user is registered as the thing that sees everything from Pardot. So every change that is made in Salesforce will um, come up as being made by this user. It also means that you need to make sure that this user has all the relevant permissions to see um, all leads and contacts and everything that they might need to change within Salesforce. Um, 
leads or contacts. So you might have heard me use the word prospects a few times. Um, in Pardot, a prospect is everyone. So it doesn't just mean people that, are try that you're hoping are going to buy from you. It could mean existing customers. It could mean people you've never spoken to. Um, a, a, any record in um, Pardot is a prospect. Um, so they can sync to both leads or contacts in Salesforce. So that will stay, you know, once, um, once a lead converts to a contact, it will still sync to the same record in Pardot. And assignment. Assignment is really key because that is how you um, create leads from Pardot. So when a, when a prospect comes into um, Pardot, maybe they fill out a form, maybe you import them via a list. Um, it's when the point at which you assign them to a user that they get pushed to Salesforce and they get created as a lead. Um, so, and it's up to you. Different businesses have different ways of doing this. You can either do it um, immediately, so every prospect that is created in Pardot, you assign to a user so they're created in Salesforce. It depends how you want to do your reporting. Or you can wait until you've nurtured them to a certain point and then assign them over and, produce and send them straight to a salesperson. So let's get hands on. Um, first thing, first of all, um, I'd like you all to fill out this form online. Um, it's not a nicely designed form, it's a very basic form, um, but this will be creating your own prospect um, record in Pardot. And while you're doing that, I'm going to walk around and give you all a number. So, three, four, five, sorry, in the corner, sorry, six, seven, eight, yeah, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. You don't have a laptop. Uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. The link's broken. You can't get on? Okay, who's having trouble? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, hang on, let me do, let me generate a new one. No, 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 no. If it worked, it, it worked. See, I knew something was going to break. Whenever you do anything live, something is going to break. Okay, can we try, I know it's a bit awkward, but can we try that one? Can you see that clearly enough? A little bit, okay. Yeah? <laughs> yeah? Anybody? Still having issues? Okay. Um, okay, where did I go up to with numbers? 20? 21? 22? 23? And 24? Does anybody not have a number? Okay. So do you still need this link or can I take it down? Sorry. Okay, can I, can I take that off now?
Okay, and once you've completed that form, navigate to, I'll get out of the way so you can see, pi.par.com and log in with this uh, email address, but replace that X with the number I gave you. And everybody should have the same password. Give me a shout if you're having problems. <laughs> I'd have just given you a new one. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> um, okay. Do you, okay. Do we do we still need this screen, or can I move it? Um, you still okay. If you're if you're in, f have a little uh, poke around, familiarise yourself. Yes. Um, try to show the password. <laughs> okay, try uh, try a different number. Try thirty-five. Oh, are you not clicking? I'm not a robot. <laughs> okay, everyone, how are we doing? Are you logged in? You can't log in? Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, what's... Uh, yep, you're in? Oh, you need to replace that with your number? Oh, okay. Yep, okay. Anyone else having issues? Yep. Okay, so you need to use um, you need to use that email. Oh, sorry. Um, but replace X with your number. Right. Okay. Great. Yeah. Okay. So, who is this? The first time that you've logged into Pardot? Yeah. Cool. Okay. That's good. Can I? Can I? Can I? Are you still using? Right. One second. Sorry. If you, uh, if you are in, I'll give you a little challenge. See if you can locate the prospect record that you just built. So the, the prospect that you just created your form with, see if you can find that, uh, that record and have a look around. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. All right, so, <coughs> so you should have all uh, you should all see this uh, dashboard as you as you logged in. Um, let's first of all let's take a look at our um, prospect record. So you may have found it already. Um, the navigation down the left. If you find the prospects uh, tab. Um, Click prospect list, or you can you can use the search bar at the top. Um, but oh, it's being quite slow. Okay, so we've got active prospects, last activity, all time. We have no prospects here because we have no active prospects. So, huh? Okay, this is why you never do live demos. Still loading. Okay, oh, here we go, here we go, right, okay. So, all prospects, you can see we've got a few here now. Um, find your name. Um, if you can't find it, you might need to expand the number of items on the page, or you can use the filter to search. I'm gonna click into mine. Um, so I actually didn't complete this extra information here, but what you should see is 
Um, we've got kind of basic information about the prospect here. We've got all your um, default fields down here. So these are all the field level information. For those of you who aren't Salesforce admins or don't know Salesforce very well, field is basically a row in a table where you store information about the prospect, uh, about a lead or a contact. So in Pardot, it's the same for a prospect. And you can sync um, all of these fields to Salesforce fields. And that, go that goes both, both ways. It's bidirectional. Um, or you can choose not to have it bidirectional. It's up to you. But um, yeah, so uh, that, that's all the default information here. We've got our custom fields here. So you should see the information that you filled out on that form there. And we've also got our activity. So normally, we would have. Um, if we had web trafficking implemented, we would have pages, web pages that we visited here. Um, obviously, we've only got forms here now. So, um, one thing that I will show you now is I built a little um, report earlier of um, uh, leads that we created um, through Pardot. Um, but as you can see, I, um, I am the only person in this report currently, and that's because we haven't assigned any of our prospects over to Salesforce yet. So that's going to be our challenge for today. We're going to, um, we're going to build a, a list of all of our prospects. We're going to build an engagement studio program that, um, that kind of does a few little different things. But then um, the end goal is you want to assign your own prospect over so that we can push it to Salesforce. So. Um, We'll go back to here and we're going to start off by building a list. Um, so kind of click along with me as we go. This, um, so you find lists um, under segmentation, which is this, um, marketing segmentation lists. And lists are really, really important in Salesforce, um, in Pardot, because um, lists are kind of how you control all of your programs um, and all of your campaigns. If you send an email, um, unless it's kind of automated in the back end, you send to a list. So it's really, it's really useful to have a good grasp of how to build those lists. There are two types of lists. There are static lists and dynamic lists. Static lists are just that. Static, they stay the same. So once you've built a list, you have to manually add or remove um, prospects to, the, to that list. A dynamic list is based on rules, and that's what we're going to build today. So a dynamic list will automatically update continuously in the background based on the rules that you build. So um, we'll go to add a list. Please preface the name of your list with your name or your initials or uh, some, some way of differentiating your list from everyone else's, because if we have 10 different test lists, it'll get confusing. <laughs> so. And normally, I'd be giving you best practice on naming conventions and folders that you should be saving in. But we'll, we'll bypass all of that for now. Um, so once you've chosen your name, um, ignore most of these. We're going to select dynamic list. That's important, dynamic list. And then this button should change to say set rules. And then we'll click through. <coughs> yeah, is everyone here OK? OK, cool. Um, so. OK? All right, so um, we've got many uh, rules that we can choose from here. They're, they're a little bit haphazard in the way that they're stored, I think it's fair to say. Um, so obviously, in Salesforce, if you, were build, if you were using, say, filters on a report or something, um, you would have the fields to choose from. We've got those custom fields and default fields here. Um, we've also got a lot of different things to choose from. So. Um, we can choose things on the account or opportunity if they're linked to Salesforce and they're linked to an account or an opportunity. Um, we can choose CRM campaign. And then we've got things like actions the prospect has taken. So forms, landing pages, um, the prospect score, if they've got a score set, so lots of different things. Um, we, yeah, we've got time to have a little play around. I'll give you five minutes. No, that's still too long. Two minutes to um, play around with some of those different rules, um, see what you can come up with. Um, we've also got, um, as you can see, we've got match all and match any here. And that's basically and and or. So if we say match all, it means all of the rules that we build, if we build multiple rules, we've got an and there. If we switch to match any, that becomes an or. 
If you want to add brackets, so if you want to add slightly more complex logic, we've got something called rule groups. So um, you could do, and you can kind of switch between the match all and match any here. So that, that is how you would make, build more complex logic. Unfortunately, you can only go one level deep. So it doesn't have the same flexibility that we might have been used to elsewhere, but that is how you would do that. Um, okay, you've got two minutes to kind of have a play around and then I'll set you your target. Y yeah? Okay, I'll come help you. Okay, where's the, where's the list? This is the page I'm getting. Okay, so let's click edit. You might have made a. I think you built a list that's not designed. Oh, it's good. Uh, I just have a look. I think maybe build a new list because I think it's not dynamic. I can't really. Okay. So if you go to add list. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and make sure you click dynamic list. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> okay, cool. Okay, any any questions? Yeah. Well, maybe I'm being stuck. What, what list are we building? A list of At the moment, you're just playing around and seeing what's there. Oh, In okay. one minute, I will give you. I'll tell you what list we're building. So you preloaded a load of prospects somewhere. When you were we just built those prospects. Oh, so just these things. Okay. Yeah. So just yeah, you just have a play around with what's there. Um. So just have a look and see what different options you can build. Oh, really? um, and then in one minute, well, 30 seconds probably. OK, any more questions? OK. So what we're going to do is build, um, build a list of everybody that completed our form, i.e. everybody in the room. And that's what we're going to use as the basis, as the recipient list for our programs. So, um, sorry, I have to delete anything that you might have built. Um, match all or match any isn't actually important at this stage because we're only going to use one rule. Um, and that rule is prospect form, London's calling form was completed successfully. And then we click run rules. And we won't get results straight away. That'll take, it can take up to 10 minutes to, um, to load, but we'll get that going. Okay, so everybody, sh shall I show you those rules? Sorry, I went through that. Okay, is everybody there? Yeah. Okay, so um, now, now is the actual fun bit. We've got Engagement Studio. Um, and I really, really like Engagement Studio because it's got such a great canvas. So um, if we, we find Engagement Studio under Marketing Engagement Studio, and then click Add Engagement Program. And again, if you could use, uh, if you could use your name, um, we'll bypass the folder, etc. OK. And then here, when we're build, um, for our recipient list, select your list from, uh, from the thing, from the drop down. Oh, yeah, by the way, if I mention drop down, it's the same as a pick list in, in Salesforce. It's just called a drop down in Pardot. Um, OK, so has everybody got your, your list as the recipient list? Um, the suppression list is really useful. Um, because it overrides the recipient list. So if, you're, if you're, there's ever a group of pe people that you really, really don't want to contact or you don't want to add to a certain program, um, put them in the suppression list and it's just kind of extra, extra security. So the suppression list will always override the recipient list. The, um, the send emails during business hours only um, can be useful. However, um, it's worth bearing in mind that it only works for one time zone. So if you're emailing people in multiple time zones, it kind of 
doesn't work very well. So it's up to you whether you leave that selected or not. I tend not to use it. And then this is a really nice canvas. So um, it's, it's, uh, it's a really good way of kind of visualizing your programs. Uh, and there are different things that we can do at each stage. So we have actions, triggers, and rules. A rule is, is that a question, sorry? No. <laughs> a, ru <laughs> a rule is something that we know about the prospect. So uh, again, it could be field information. Um, it could be things like their assigned user. It could be a list, um, like a list that they're in, a Salesforce campaign, anything like that. Um, sorry. Um, a trigger is something that the prospect has done. So um, we've got link clicks, we've got form completions, landing page completions, um, and file downloads. So anything that we've got a record of that the, the prospect has done. And then an action is something that we would do. So send an email, create a Salesforce task. That can be really useful. Because obviously, once you create a Salesforce task, you can trigger any sort of process in Salesforce. So that's a really key one if you're using the, pro the systems together. Um, and yeah, lots of other options there. So we'll go through and we'll build the first three steps together. And then I'll set you your challenge. And then you can build it on your own. So uh, first step, let's choose a rule. Um, let, um, I'm going to choose a custom field, so prospect custom field. Um, you can choose, it's up to you which, um, which rule you choose at this point. Um, obviously it's a drop down, so you want it to be, um, you want it to choose from a list, so rather than use contains, switch to is. Uh, mozzarella. Okay, and then we've got the, um, we've got a time frame here. So um, for a rule, it's fairly obvious what those time frames mean. We've got um, immediately. Um, or wait. Unfortunately, wait steps, um, wait increments in Pardot are only days. We can't do our increments or um, times. Um, it's something that we've all been asking for for a really long time. They are aware of it. Hopefully, it will come soon. But um, yeah, we're still we're still waiting for that. So for now, um, it has to be full days. Um, obviously, for the purpose purposes of our program, let's um, keep it to immediately. And then, we, and then we get it split into two branches. So we've got a yes branch and a no branch. Um, and that's true for everything. It's um, any uh, question that you ask at this point, so any, um, any rule or trigger that you listen for, um, the yes branch is always right, no is left, and it's belay, and it's got to be one of those. Um, OK, then let's, uh, uh, let's say, actually, let's do a trigger. So. Um, for this, I'm just going to choose a form. Um, I'll pick our form because that's uh, the only one that we've uh, got running currently. So London's calling form was completed. Um, and now we've got two, uh, we've got slightly different wait options here. Um, we've got the wait option that we saw before, which means that the, um, the question is asked or Pardot listens for whether somebody has completed that form after two days, and that is the point at which you ask that question. Two days, and that's it. The um, up to a maximum of means that Pardot is listening constantly. So um, as soon as somebody completes that form, they will go down the yes path. After two days, if they haven't completed the form, they will go down the no path. Is that clear? Yeah? OK. So. Um, we're just going to keep that at zero, though, for our time. I've just got to wait for that to load. Okay, while well, that's waiting. Um, and then we'll add a, add a, um, an action here. I think the action that I'll add, actually, we can do, um, let's do notify user. Select user. You've all, all of your numbers will be in here as users. So if you'd like to notify yourself, that's how you select from your user. Mine is going to be just Pine. And again, keep it to immediately because we're um, doing this and that hasn't saved. Okay. 
So, very quick overview. But I think it's much more fun if I leave you to kind of figure it out. So, um, I've got a challenge for you. You're going to build your own engagement studio program. Um, you should obviously have the dynamic list that you built as your recipient list already. Uh, you must include at least three rules. Uh, you must include at least one trigger. Include one action of adjust score. Include an action of notify a user. Please notify yourself <laughs> and don't send loads of emails to somebody else. Um, include an action of create a Salesforce task and you can add some text to that as well, so be creative. Um, and then finally, assign only your prospect record to my user. So obviously you need to think, um, think about how to get your prospect record on its own unique branch. I mean, there should be something in that prospect record that is unique to you and nobody else. So, uh, yep. Um, sure you can figure that out. I'll, um, you've probably got, I'll give you 10 minutes to have a play around. You can make that as complicated as you like. Um, just see what you can do. I'll be kind of walking around, uh, chatting to you. So f shout out if you've got any questions. Um, yeah. Any, any questions now? Okay, go. Yeah. It can be. Um, and what? Um, but what you want to do is you want to build a rule that's just is your email address, okay. and then that's the branch that you put your application on to a time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I'm just trying to figure out what sort of um, example to use. So. Okay. Well, let me know if you have any questions. You all okay here? Huh? But also, you don't want to notify me. You want to assign to me. Okay. Yeah. How you doing? Yeah. It's nice, isn't it? Feeling okay? I think so. Yeah. Good. Good. Um, so you can do it in any order you like. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm just basically doing my random examples. Yeah. Yeah. The only the only rule that you need to be really specific on yeah. is um, which the one that you're where you're you're the only person in this branch. Right. Okay. Yeah. No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yeah. 
Uh, so, uh, uh, no, so that's not, so the rule that you want. Mm -hmm. um, so can you, can you think of what, what might be unique about your prospect record? Right, uh, my name and uh, yeah. like where I work. Yeah, or, or I mean, email address is probably email the safest. Address. Yeah, so um, what the so build a rule that says um, yeah rule yeah. So and then you want to look for a prospect default field. Yeah. 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 Um, email. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, basically I chose my uh, city and address first for the first two rules. So the third one yeah. is the email. Okay. Cool. So, uh, where did So, uh, I think you just gone past it. Okay. Do not email. So yeah, email, email there. So yeah. 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 And then my. Yeah, and then your email address. Well, you can even change contains to is. Okay. Uh, if you're confident that you've. Uh, that you've got it, then yeah? Okay. Test. Yeah. Yeah, well, you don't have to, but you know, it might be nice to, so that some of your rules and triggers can be in the no branch if you like. And yeah, once, if you feel like you've, um, if you feel like you've got it, um, navigate to the testing tab, which you'll see at the top underneath your underneath the name of the program um, and just test it, test out your logic. We've got a, we've got a few more minutes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Okay, so um, are you confident that you're the person in... Right, great. Yeah. <laughs> Solid answer. Okay, so you go uh, to add a add a step on the right hand branch. Okay. Yeah. Um, and an action. And then assign to user. Yeah. And then assign it to so you can type my name and you want to assign it to me so that it will push over. Yeah. Yep. Good stuff. And then just play around with some other stuff. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it might. Um, when did you start it? Oh, just now, right? Yeah, it might take a while sometimes. Yeah, and it just uh, it just takes a little while sometimes. I normally go away for ten minutes and then come back. So. <laughs> Me, yes, Jess Pine. Uh, and, and sorry, you're not notifying, you're assigning to me. So you notify yourself. So your, it will be your number. So what number did I give you? So it'll be, so it'll be eighth trailblazer. <laughs> yeah, and then you, but you assigned to me. And yeah, if you if you've finished, um, play around on the no branch as well, and see how see how complex you can make it because you can actually build build some really complex stuff. You can add extra endpoints and things. So, um, yep. I think we've got two more minutes. If I get more than zero percent, does mm -hmm. that mean? That probably just means it's not running yet. So oh, yeah, okay. so you haven't got anybody in it yet. So it can just take. Oh, okay. it's, yeah, it's, it's still just, starting. Yeah, okay. So it, it take. It's quite. It's quite slow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know. You know, there's like 20 prospects in there, but still. Um, I know. Um, yeah, but we're gonna we're gonna go away and then come back and test it. So. Yeah. It actually it normally takes a so ten minutes regardless. Yeah, yeah, generally. Sometimes an engagement studio program can take up to an hour. Okay. Um, and if you're if you're sending emails or updating the sync, I think it's in batches of five hundred. Okay. It's done. But they're quite it, get, it, it gets happens. there. It gets yeah. there. <laughs> cool, yeah. Yeah. Um, what I did was I went in order and I created 
everything yeah. on the yes aspect of uh, the, you know, the branching. Yeah. So is that still okay? Yeah, that's you? fine, that's fine, yeah. As long as, as, long as your user will be assigned, yeah. then... So in the end, I've assigned it to you, like, um, yeah, as it's yeah. perspective. Yeah, yeah, cool. Well, we'll test it out soon. Oh, yeah, if you want. Okay, so the only thing is, did, uh, I don't think we'd have filled out any city information for you. Okay. So, so no city, no address? Yeah, so you'd, you'd go down the no branch because we don't yeah. have that information. I see. So Can maybe I use one of the, the custom fields that we filled out in the form. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, I think it just goes through each step and tells you which way you're going, basically. So at the bottom of the bit, it doesn't confirm I've said I want to create a lead and send a task. Okay. Um, oh, that's the action. Yeah, it would do it down the and it will do it down the side here. I've probably done it all um, in order. Of and the only thing is, as well is, you've built it. If we go back to build. I just kept pressing the plus button at the top because I meant to do it. Well, so, so yeah, yeah. yeah, so this this will happen for every prospect because the yes and no branches rejoin. So actually, you want if you're kind of segmenting them, you want to do it that way. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, so, I kept pressing it at the top. Oh, have you, have you put yourself in a list, did you? Oh, no, that's your... <laughs> okay, so you need... Uh, so but, basically, it should all be after the yes. You do your extra Yeah, actions, yeah, and, and so okay. that one there... Yeah, so that you want the assign user there, assign to user there. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, that's the best way to learn, right? Yep. Yeah. It's so totally an error whenever I uh, try and edit it, so it's giving me this error. Huh. I'm just, you know, sort of... What are you trying to do? So I'm just trying to edit the fields that are not applicable, as you said. Uh, so you don't want to edit the fields, you want to, you click here. And then you change the field. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to call time on that. Um, wherever you are in your program, if you haven't clicked play, oh, click start, sorry. Can you click start now? And then we're going to go away for a bit, wait for it all to process, and then hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll have done something, something good, and we'll have some prospects in Salesforce. So we'll check back on that shortly. So while we're waiting for that to process, uh, I've got a few final, uh, final tips for you. So these are my uh, Pardot golden rules, I'd say. Um, first things first, particularly if you are working in Salesforce and you're checking uh, the sync, check your sync error queue. Um, and I'll follow up with this information afterwards, but um, this is, um, this is found under the connector information in Pardot, and this is anything that has an error between the sync, in the sync between Pardot and Salesforce. This is a huge deal because an error will just not sync. So if somebody completes um, a form on your website, says, I want to buy from you tomorrow, and there's an error, it won't get, it won't get synced to Salesforce, your sales team won't be notified. So it's, it's important to keep an eye on that. And that's, there'll be things like um, it won't meet validation rules, um, required fields, f um, things like that that will cause that. Um, active campaigns. So it doesn't look like we're going to have time to talk about um, campaigns today. Um, but the um, Pardot and Salesforce campaigns are moving towards being completely aligned, which is fantastic news because they weren't before and it was quite difficult. Um, so that's, that's really, really useful. Um, the one thing I will say is um, a common error that I get all the time is why can't I find my campaign in, in Pardot? I've, my Salesforce, I've built my Salesforce campaign, why can't I select it in Pardot? It has to be an active campaign, otherwise you can't see it. So I know it's, it's such a simple thing, but it's, it's something that happens all the time. Um, lead con contact API, um, when you're syncing fields, so obviously you build a custom field in Pardot, you can sync that to a custom field in Salesforce. Um, if you want that field to sync to um, the lead and the contact record, it has to have the same API name. 
because that, uh, otherwise it won't read both. And obviously you want it to be on both so that when it converts, that information carries over. Um, engagement Studio timeframes. So we talked briefly about the wait steps and the triggers and how that all works together. Um, if um, It's just really worth bearing in mind when you build out a program that um, those, time, those time steps have a, an implication on each other. So obviously, if you've got times down one step um, and down another, prospects might meet again at different times. Um, if you've got triggers where they can wait up to a point or they can go down a branch at certain times, you know, everyone's going to be getting stuff at different times. So it's really worth bearing that in mind and testing that and checking that before you go live because that's something that catches people a lot as well. Um, and then um, another thing that's really important or... Well, it, should, it feels like it should be re readily available for you to be able to run a rule or something in Pardot that says um, prospects that are currently in this program, prospects that are currently, this is currently happening to. Um, you actually can't, and this is, um, you have to kind of work it out from the lists. And obviously, if you're, because you can use multiple recipient lists, so you can have like five different recipient lists in a program and you don't know who's finished and it can be very confusing. So um, best practice and something that um, I always do is um, maybe have an action right at the start of the program before you do anything else that says add to list um, prospect is in XYZ program. And then the last step of the program is always remove from list XYZ program. And then at least you know who is in that program at that specified time. Um, and also maybe add them to a list that says they've been through the program as well, because again, you can't, you can't check on that, you can't report on that. And then finally, we haven't talked about automation rules at all today. They're kind of, they're like workflow rules, they run in the background. Um, if you ever start playing around with them, the one thing I will say is always preview them. So Pardot's got this really great feature that you can, um, you can preview who your rules will affect before you actually run them. So you get a list of all of the prospects that will be affected by that rule. Um, and it's super useful and it can really help you out if something test, like it's basically testing. So, and you can do that because Pardot doesn't have a sandbox. You can't test anything. So it's really important um, to do that preview because otherwise you're just going to affect your entire live database. Um, okay, uh, so we're going to have a final quiz. So if you can navigate back to kahoot.it. And... And this one uh, is going to get a bit competitive. Um, this one has scores based on how quickly you answer. So uh, if, you're a, if you've got the fighting spirit in you, Julia's won already by being the first name. Okay, is that everyone? Did you, what can you see on your screen? What's your name, sorry? I wrote the user, the IV. Uh, I don't know, do you want to try again, maybe? I think if you just just do it with whatever if it says you're in it should something should come up I think okay you ready you gotta be speedy Sorry. 
Maybe write down your answers. <laughs> Ah, good work. Good work, guys. Okay, did you did you have that? Okay, I will. I, <laughs> All right, I won't keep shaming you. To <laughs> All right, okay, next question. Oh, Ollie, good work. Okay. Oh, is it too <laughs> Oh, good, good. Not a, not as good. Is that is that easy for you to see now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see who was first that time. Ollie again. Well done. Got where's Nikki? Good, good, good. Okay. All right, uh, and then final, oh, yeah, final question. <laughs> okay, <laughs> interesting that everyone went for the triangle. Well done, you all got it right. Okay, so, Ollie, well done. Round of applause for Ollie. Okay, good stuff. Okay, um, all right. This so this is the bit where uh, we see if what we did earlier works. So a little bit nervous. Let's, uh, let's give it a go. I might zoom in a little bit. So do we? If if everybody built their engagement studio programs correctly, we sh we should see your prospects uh, registered down here. We got some. <laughs> well done. Gizaitis, have I said that right? Who, who can see their name on there? And who, Andreas, who's Andreas? Well done, well done. Danny, well done. Uh, Oli, well done. Frederick, great stuff. Callum? No? Is that, yeah, thanks. Uh, Gurdeep, great. And uh, we've got another Danny as well. Do you, do you don't know? I think I am. Well done. Okay, um, good stuff. Um, well done to you. It might, uh, it might not be your fault that it hasn't gone through. <laughs> yeah, it might still be running. It can, it can be quite slow. I'll check, I'll check back and let you know. Um, sorry. Okay, don't worry. You can see it from here anyway now. But um, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna end there. Um, I will follow up with um, some links, for kind of for further information. Um, I'm gonna plug the Pod at Use group as well. It'd be really great to see some of you there. Um, does anybody have any questions for me? Yes. Um, so there are different there are different roles based on what you can do. Um, sales users can only see their own records. So the, if a sales user can will respect roles and hierarchies from Salesforce, marketing users can see everyone. So if you want to, anyone who can build, you will have marketing roles um, today. So anybody who can build that stuff, yeah, it doesn't respect roles and hierarchies. Anything else? Um, obviously Trailhead. <laughs> um, unfortunately, there are only a few modules uh, about Pardot on Trailhead at the moment. Um, we're, they are bringing out more each time, so that will be great. Um, there is, there was an amazing knowledge base uh, on Pardot, and um, it's in the process of being moved over to Salesforce, and I think um, to the Salesforce help and training, and I think they're pushing to get that all on Trailhead, so I think we just need to wait for that there. Um, but yeah, there is, there are like lots of articles to read and there, there's some there are some um, training videos but they're they're quite basic so I'd, I'd recommend the articles that's that's what I that's where I started yeah oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah a lot a lot yeah Pardot is um 
much more straightforward. Um, it's really, it's really user friendly. So uh, uh, the great thing about Pardot is that you don't actually have to be a technical person. So a marketing user can use Pardot. Um, same can't be said for Marketing Cloud. Yeah, anything else? Okay, well, thank you. And well done.